It's time to warn the Joes, but suddenly they launch the fire bat. Okay, time for part two of this epic restoration of this legendary, if now for me, infamous playset. We've got the ring done, as you saw in part one, and now we've got to deal with most of the internals for part two uh, for the lower base plate and the dome section, as well as the interior wall panels. There's a lot of accessories that kind of go into this. There's a few stickers, like there's this launch lever here that has these two stickers that say launch. They're going to have to get pulled off and replaced. Um, but we're going to need the ring in order to properly do up part two and, and get this all correct because the original sticker placement for this terror drone when it was uh donated to the channel um the baked stickers even though they had to be replaced anyway they were also a lot of them were in the wrong places they were just kind of stuck in various spots and that means that i can't necessarily trust the placement of this logo of the cobra symbol on this dome uh, i've got my instruction sheets here um, and i'm going to be studying wall placement versus gun turret placement versus this orientation because the bottom of this cobra emblem if you're looking over the terror drone the bottom of this cobra emblem needs to be pointed right at the spot just to the right of the chair that sits between the two main turrets it's a whole thing so we got to make sure after we strip these stickers off, that that's gonna be correct. The other challenge with getting the stickers off of this is getting the residue off because these dome doors have nothing under them and they're attached by these fragile hinges. So if we put too much downward pressure on these trying to get the adhesive off after we pull the stickers off, I could snap these hinges and we'd be in a really bad spot. So what I thought I would do is pull these down like this, where there's not as much pressure, maybe even put some bubble wrap behind here, and then um, get rid of them that way. Then afterwards, go ahead and orient the ring on top. Um, the ring has a, a keyed spot. It's, a, it's an arrow. I believe the arrow is facing you guys right now. But once I line that up, just as a test fit, I'm going to then bring the dome back up. Whoop, that's what you don't want to happen because we don't have the ring on there yet. Uh, I'm going to bring the dome back up, check the alignment, and put the new stickers on very carefully because that's the other thing. Because these are all segmented, you've got to be sure that you put those stickers on perfectly or else when the dome comes back up, the Cobra emblem looks all janky. So it's like another headache where you're just like, ah! All that to say, we're going to be real careful with this and try and get it looking right. I, I, have, I have no confidence that it's going to be easy and straightforward to get a good result. I just have no confidence in that whatsoever because it's the Terror Drome. As far as the wall panels go inside the interior walls, I did them up with uh, a suggestion that a lot of people were throwing around that I had heard about um in my travels years prior to doing this there are people online that swear you don't have to put the parts in contact with the peroxide whether it's liquid or a cream or a paste at all you set them in a closed container that's clear so sunlight can come through and you just basically put them in a moat you you suspend them over a moat of peroxide and then you let the fumes de-yellow the part well, that sounds, and people are saying that they've gotten good results from it. And I'm sure they have when you have like a geological amount of time to wait. Um, unfortunately, I wasted half a day trying to get a result on a very nice warm deck with a, with a cling filmed container and everything. I poured an entire massive bottle of Salon 40 peroxide into the bottom of this thing, rigged up this elevation system. My point is, I lost a lot of time and I lost a lot of sunlight for absolutely no result whatsoever. There was no result at all. Um, admittedly, that was really irritating. I'm sure it works for people who like 
sit it and forget it for like a week or something like that. Um, I just I. I, I'm not under that that luxury. I, I don't have that kind of time. Um, I, I need I need things to move along, and um, and so I I I got no result from that. So I had to turn around and use the remaining amount of time uh, uh, in the day yesterday with sunlight, since it's autumn, and so we're in the northern hemisphere, and so there's not as much sunlight. Um, I had to turn around and um, maximize my time there and get the cream out. And do it that way and the cream provided a result that is very admirable for most of them um there is still a little bit of marbling on these uh i might be able to reverse it with another another round but it's it's it is what it is i'm it's it's i mean they look pretty good so i'm i'm gonna call that a win uh, I've got my uh, fuel stations set up here. I've already dealt with those. I've got to get some stickers off of them. And then we got to deal with the main uh, turret cannons themselves uh, for the last part of this video. I'm going to uh, clean up and test fit the main uh, howitzer cannons that come off the top. But that'll be the last part, obviously, because that will require the ring to go back on and everything to slot in and then um, this sticker needs to be perfectly correct before I go and deal with those, those cannons. So we have a lot to do today. Let's get to it. Sorry about that. The time lapse wasn't going to completely work because there were so many stickers to remove, so much adhesive to remove, as you saw, and then so many stickers to put back on that it would have just been like a 20 minute time lapse at 5,000% speed and it would still be 20 minutes. So I, I thought, you know, you guys have gotten the gist of this. I've got everything now cleaned up for this stage. I'm going to put everything back together. So the first thing we're doing is we're just going to do the obvious, you know, it's like, you know, on a math test, you know, do the ones you know first. All right, so we have our fuel pump stations. There are three of these uh, here on the bottom foundation ring, the foundation base plate of the Terradrome. All right, so these have pins that are kind of like, you know, guide pins. You don't want those to break off. Uh, they kind of determine how everything, you know, fits. So you just kind of find these two grooves and you put the pins back here. You slide it forward, you lay it down, and then you push it back in with these two um, tabs. So it's like you slide it in from the back, you, you roll forward, you lay down, and then you push in like that. Uh, I'll do it like this. So it's pins... Uh, watch out for these hoses because these hoses are attached to these pins on the plates and they do snap off. Alright, and then we push in. Okay, just letting that hose just exist on its own there for a while. And then 
Last one. Slide forward and then slide back. Okay. So there, there are our three uh, fuel pump stations. All right, now we have to do the interior walls. The interior walls are here. They're all stickered. Thanks again to Sal at Two Cents Toys for helping me source better walls than the ones that uh, showed up with this playset. Um, I did, you know, brighten all these as you saw in the intro to this video. Okay, so these have to go in in a particular order. Otherwise, I'll end up screwing up the uh, interior layout. You always make sure that these are um, on the outside. Now, before you put these bulkhead walls in, here's the trick. You've got to put the ring on because these clip to the ring. So let's get our ring and make sure that it's in the right spot. Okay, now I know this is going to be hard to see, but there is a, a raised triangle arrow right here at the very bottom of the base plate of the pterodrome and you will have to line that up with a with a similar arrow that is on the base ring base ring that is on the ring uh molded onto the ring it's a it's a it's a raised arrow on the ring of the pterodrome top so let's line those up Yep. The moment you the moment it lines up, it keys into place, which is really nice. There's only one way to put this thing on, which is great. Um, this is really a test fit at the moment because we're gonna have to take this ring off again in order to put these stickers on. But I want to make sure I know exactly which way these stickers need to be oriented. And remember what I said, they are supposed to go. They're supposed to start, the emblem is supposed to start, according to this diagram, the bottom of the emblem is supposed to be just to the right of the chair between the gun turrets. Okay, so our two turrets are right here. So I'm going to turn this. All right, this is where our two turrets are supposed to be. Right here. This is the chair between the two turrets. So that means, according to this diagram, and in typical Hasbro fashion, the uh, actual diagram doesn't quite line up with the way the parts sit. It doesn't exactly line up, but at least I know generally where it's supposed to be. So, um, this, on the diagram, this seam line is actually in line with this. But I'm going to err on the side of kicking it over just a little bit. So I'll put the bottom corner, the bottom left corner of the emblem on this piece. everybody we are now on to putting in the bulkhead walls now that we have used said walls and orientation of the top ring to properly orient the emblem of the cobra symbol on the firebat dome the launch the launch uh cover for the firebat uh silo okay so now we got to put these walls in in the proper place so like i said You've got, you know, your A uh, tab and you've got your, your B tabs and they're all labeled. But it's going to be harder to see because I've put the uh, ring on. But they're right here at the edges. So there's A and there's B. So, for example, this is an A. So we're just going to slot that in there and make sure it lines up properly with... And it is keyed. You want to make sure that you're All right. Okay, there we go. All 
and it's going to click in. So just be gentle with it because it is that brittle G.I. Joe plastic. But you want it to click into place. It's that last centimeter that's, that's where it gets dicey. There we go. Okay. That was surprisingly easy, that last one. That was nice. Okay. We have one more wall to do, and it is right here. It is uh, the jail cell. Um, it is this piece right here, and um, it goes in with two tabs that go into two holes right here. Uh, it's usually easiest in this situation to, if you have any uh, you know, prisoners from, from the Joe ranks, to kind of get them in there early. So uh, I've got my prisoner here, so I'm just going to put him in there. Um, there's foothold pegs back here for him to stand on um, and then this goes into the peg uh, these uh, tabs go into the slots and then really don't want to break these tabs off so make sure they're in there okay they are the Cobra Teradrome is really incredible yep that's it so door slides open Well, we are now on the final step of stage two. Stage two, part two, was a big leap for this playset. It's all downhill from here. Uh, we just have to do the panels along the bottom, which is going to be a big deal. It's going to involve more peroxide, more fitting, more you know, careful masking, all that kind of stuff. And of course, the fire bat, which I haven't forgotten about, which will go down into the, the main silo. But these are the finished turrets and they had intact elevation tabs on them so these uh, these turrets were in pretty good shape they're not going to droop like a lot of them end up doing but they have a, a peg on the bottom and they just peg into uh, the turret mount now like I said um, I am not clipping these turret mounts into the pterodrome at this time uh, I'm leaving them as they are because once they get stuck in there to get them out usually involves breaking them and I I'd really like these to stay removable uh, for the foreseeable future. Okay. So the main turrets are now in the Terradrome. We are done with uh, part two. So what does that mean for part three? Well, everyone, that is the completion of part two of the Cobra Terradrome restoration. Part three is still going to be a doozy, uh, but it's the downhill it's uh it's putting the fire bat into its silo with its pilot uh this fire bat was shockingly in good shape and i accidentally fixed it all up while just idly twiddling my thumbs the other night all i had to do was swap out a canopy and a, a cowling and a landing gear and it was pretty much ready to go i am waiting on um some bombs to show up which should be here any day now but uh other than that, this fire bat is totally complete. The big challenge for part three is going to be these doors that go all along the bottom uh, of 
the the pterodrome. Um, these doors are all done in that gray plastic that turns brown yellow, kind of like the consoles. And uh, so some of these look pretty good and some of them don't look great at all. Some of them are gonna need uh, heat gun treatment to reduce stress marks so I can put the cannons back in. Um, there, some of them with these uh, these like uh, kickstands are gonna require some masking of the kickstands before they get peroxided. Um, it's gonna be, <laughs> The Terradrome, the only way I know how to describe it is the Terradrome as a restoration is a toy that does not let you go it, it, like until the last second. It will, it will sling you around with its jaws around your neck until the very last second. Um, it's an iconic playset from the G.I. Joe line. Um, it has a it has an amazing uh, rationale in the original uh, comics from Marvel that were written by Larry Hama. He did a great job explaining what this actually is. Um, but in terms of a restoration project, I don't want to do another one. Like this, I'm good. I've done this one, or will have done, and I'm good at that point. But it's a fabulous looking playset once it's all together and very clean and fresh. Um, but in the meantime, um, getting it to that point from 35 years plus aging, whew, that's something else. All right, so uh, I'm going to figure out what I need to do to get this going because I've got to buy more peroxide. I'm waiting on these bombs. So part three maybe a few extra days wait from the time between part one and part two. Uh, so just be patient. We're on the final stretch. I want this done as much as everybody else does. In the meantime, you might see another video in between. Hard to say. We'll just have to see how things arrive, how quickly they show up. Um, but uh, as always, really appreciate everybody's enthusiasm for the first part of this video uh, series. Hope you guys have enjoyed this part. And I'll see you on part three, and if that's not the next video, I'll still see you on the next video.